welcome back. It's still ballot 2023, and tomorrow is the governorship and state house of assembly elections. And if you ask me, that is even the most important one because that is the government that is closest to the people. But we're looking at the lessons we learned from the presidential and national assembly elections and how that will translate into making or marring uh, the election of tomorrow. I did promise you that we're going to be joined later on by Reverend Father Raymond Anoliefo. Well, he has joined us now. He's the Director, Justice Development and Peace Center, JDPC Lagos. Welcome to the program, Father. Thank you very much. Okay. So I've spoken with O. O. Nwoye, who is a, a tech expert, and also we started off with uh, Mr. Shegun Shopuchon. Now that you're joining us, uh, JDPC. Uh, what lessons are you carrying from the last election into the second election, uh, that is the governorship and state house of assembly elections? Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, in the last um, election, the presidential and the national assembly elections, we were out there on the field and we deployed observers across the length and breadth of Lagos State and then together with the Catholic Caritas Foundation of Nigeria, we had well over 3,000 or 4,000 observers across the country. Um, so we, it, was, it was a beautiful one. It was, of course, they were heightened expectations. A lot of persons expected a lot of things out of this election. I think um, the INEC promised us a great deal, and we see the the youth bulge in the election as well that, that characterized this election leading up to the election. There was a lot of interest even from the international community and then of course from us here in Nigeria. It was also, the, the interest was very high. So I'll say give and take, at that point we all expected that this election would be a watershed in our democracy. And um, it was neither here nor there for us at the JDPC. Neither here nor there in that the, the one thing that we all looked forward to with regards to the Beavers supposedly being the game changer, um, I don't think our expectations were adequately met at the presidential and national assembly elections. We, we felt a little disappointed, especially with regards to uploading of the results using the beavers onto IREV. Um, that wasn't comprehensively done across the 36 states plus FCT. And here in Lagos, of course, we had uh, pockets of violence um, in some parts of Lagos that also marred that, that election. But that said, I think um, going forward, tomorrow's election, um, ANEC has something to prove that they are credible, that they are capable, and they are willing, of course, to right the wrongs of the presidential elections. And we are quite hopeful, we're optimistic. Uh, we'll be there tomorrow again to observe the, the elections for tomorrow. So we are, we are optimistic and we are hoping that all will go well. And this time, INEC will deliver on its promises. Has there been any interaction with INEC since uh, the presidential and national assembly elections between the JDPC and INEC? Um, yes, but not, not directly, in that, um, of course, between this period, INEC had also met with um, civil society organizations, of which we have been part of it. And we have also given a press conference immediately after the elections, uh, just to, to let Nigerians know exactly um, what our findings were um, while we are out there on the field. Um, so, basically, INEC has promised not only the civil society organizations, not only the JDPC, but the entire country that they will do better, they'll do better. So we, there's a, there, of course, there's a trust deficit in our system at this time, the trust deficit, but rather than throw away the baby and the bathwater, let's, let's give them a second chance, I would say that. Let's give them a second chance. I'm optimistic that they'll probably want to right the wrongs of the, of the presidential elections, the 25th February elections. And uh, we hope that the that Beavers and IREV, of course, will serve the purpose for which it was designed, for which it was created. And I would say that was really the toast of the election, that a lot of people believe that their votes will count. And so we are hoping that tomorrow the, the votes will actually count. 
Shegun, you also have dealings with uh, the civil society. You're part of the civil society. Um, what also, uh, what is the strength of your confidence in tomorrow's exercise, knowing what transpired at the national uh, assembly elections and the presidential elections and the time in between? Well, I mean, <clears throat> pardon me. So we, we've seen a lot of interactions between INEC and, um, and the various stakeholder groups. Um, civil society, the politicians or the political parties, uh, security agencies, and even the electorate. And, you know, INEC has said a lot of things in terms of um, trying to maybe assuage fears, um, lift the confidence. Um, but the old saying is that the taste of the pudding is in the eating, mm -hmm. you know. So what we ate on the 25th of February was not tasteful at all, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, so tomorrow... Um, INEC simply has to do better. Uh, I don't want to mince words, you know, without equivocation, 25th of February was a disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for some of us, especially for some of us in civil society who had embarked on a lot of voter education, you know, and all of that, encouraging people, um, trying to build their confidence, um, trying to work against voter apathy, that you know, uh, we've experienced over time as a result of their lack of trust in the system. You know, um, it was almost as though we put our personal integrity on the line you know, as organizations. And to come to the process and find that INEC failed to follow their own process you know, was very disappointing. Tomorrow, INEC must do differently. They must do better. It's very simple. I don't think anybody, including the main political actors, uh, would um, have too much to say with regards to the result if the process is transparent and if the process is credible. And the use of technology was the major basis for the confidence that we all had and for all the good things that we said about INEC, about their preparedness, about the process that they've laid out you know, the guidelines that they sent forward, the, the wonderful, in quotes, provisions of the Electoral Act, you know, all of that um, needs to come together tomorrow. We need to see uh, a, a, an interplay of all of those factors effectively and ensuring that the process is credible. So this is an opportunity for Professor Mahmoud Yakubu in particular, because, you know, when we um, talk about INEC, it's an institution but the institution has a head, and it is his name that people are calling. And I think it's important to um, let him know that, you know, posterity and history will judge him one way or the other. You know, so it's critical that at this point, his legacy is one where he can look back and be proud. At the moment, he runs the risk right now of competing with the well. 2003 <laughs> and 2007 commission and the chairman of those commissions, which, you know, is the most ignominious in the mm -hmm. history of Nigeria. You know, right now, Mahmoud Yakubu is running that risk. Uh, well, but he has always insisted that he didn't fail Nigerians. Um, well, maybe we'll come back to that. Well, oh, oh, you're still there. And um, uh, we're concerned this same technology that failed us in the last election, uh, do you see that it needs an improvement or that same technology can deliver on the promises that were made by INEC to Nigerians tomorrow? Um, the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Um, I think the biggest mistake made, and I've said this in many fora, the biggest mistake we made on the last 20, uh, 25th of February was trusting INEC. And um, as a result, I, I don't think anyone should believe what they say. And uh, consequently, interestingly, last week, um, my team built a product called Collate.Africa. So the whole idea is simple, to replicate what IREF was supposed to be. Because people, when, when I just thought about it now, uh, when um, Father Anulefo was speaking, people say their votes should count. Yes, it actually counts at the polling unit, but it's not collated, right? It's when it's time for collation that we have the theories, the, the stories. Because the whole essence of IREF was that it goes directly from PU straight to HQ, to the headquarters, and it could not be manipulated. The, but however, we're seeing a case where the tally, even on IREF of River State, says something completely different. A party didn't score up to 25%, and it was declared winner 
based on the statistics on IREF today, not based on people's own um, collection or aggregation. And I think one of the biggest mistakes was in trusting INEC. So when people went to the collection center, they hadn't prepared to collect images of PEUs from their agents or from the third parties. So everyone was dependent on the IREF um, system. And when they say it couldn't upload and people had gone home, only for people to go home and go to the website and see that after 24 hours, less than 10% of the polling units had had their uh, the results uploaded, which is a mandatory aspect of the uh, conduct uh, the the guidelines for this election. So I think many organizations have started creating their own parallel IRFs, and I think every Nigerian that votes tomorrow must, as a matter of obligation take a picture of their um, the, um, the form, you see it, and find a way to upload it. So we built something called Collate.Africa. Uh, there are other ones out there, but it's very important that we do not trust this time. Okay, we'll come back to how that Collate.Africa works. I'm interested because if there's something else that INEC will be afraid of, uh, then we should know it. Not just INEC, but when we're talking about uh, people who are serving the public, there should be something that we should be looking back and saying, okay, if we misbehave, it is going to fire back at us. Maybe they didn't have that in the last election. And that also goes to the civil society organization and the JT, JDPC. Um, it's like when you're having uh, traffic wardens on the road, people behave, drivers behave. So when you're monitoring, I'm sure the places that you monitor, there will be some sort of order. So even with the disappointments that you had in the last election, what are your plans for tomorrow, the JDPC? Um, okay, thank you very much. Now, um, let me just quickly make that very short clarification here. There's a, little, there's a bit of a difference between the, the monitor and the observer. Uh, we were observers, only INEC and um, INEC officials, per se, are uh, allowed to monitor elections and while we are expected to observe. And so going out there on the field, our business was to observe, that is, to watch what's happening, to gather information on what's happening, to collate those information, to analyze them, and of course, in the end, to make a report of what we have found. If you ask me, if you ask me about the, 20, um, the February 25th election, uh, we, we actually did go out. It was a beautiful one. It started very well almost across um, Lagos State, for example, where I was the director. It started pretty very well. And somewhere along the line, uh, pockets of um, orchids came around. And regardless of the order that was there, you know, mayhem broke out. Uh, of course, before then, there was the very rife delay in the electoral officers arriving the polling units. Uh, considerably, I think, um, from our statistics, only about 30 to 35 percent arrived at about 8.30 a.m., the remainder came very late. And of course, we know what happened. It affected the, the proceedings. And so while we dealt with that on the one hand, then violence came. But at this point, I must say that we were also grateful of this, for the security measures that were put in place. Were they adequate? No, they were not. But they were, there was a marked improvement from 2019. There was a marked improvement. For the first time... I remember in 2015, uh, 2015 elections, I remember, I did, uh, I did mention on one of the um, media houses that I was at at the time that we should not mil militarize our elections. But I saw myself eating those words <laughs> in, in 2023. I was excited to see the military, <laughs> you know? I was excited to see them out there. And they, they give a lot of confidence in some areas where I was in particular, and I'll mention them, uh, Sue Leary, it was, some areas were just catastrophic. And I can tell you, elections would never have held in those places if the military did not intervene. The military did. We, at a point in time, we were all dispersed from the police stations. Um, bottles were thrown at us. 
a whole de a great deal. And I thought that wearing my clerical wear, I would be accorded some, <laughs> some respect. Some but uh, I was very wrong. I had to also take cover, <laughs> you know. But thankfully, we reconvened again when the military came. And hopefully, and then the elections went on smoothly till the end. And of course, we observed everything. I was there till the end. And up until when nobody was going to upload the results. And that was when another mayhem almost broke up from the electorate who didn't want the ANEC officials to leave, the electoral officers to leave. I had to even implore on them that we, one has to go with them to the um, World Coalition Center and see what we can do with regards to uploading. Uh, we did take photographs. We had photographs of uh, the, the form EC8A. But of course, that was not enough. And uh, of course, I did check. What I had tallied with what was on um, IREV at the end of the day uh, from my, from the, a few poly, polling units where I observed. Of course, we also found some where there were a couple of uh, discrepancies, uh, which I'm sure they are all out there on the social media spaces. So I don't need to bore you, bore you with that. Uh, so basically, uh, I think I'll toe the line of um, my brother here and also OO as well. Uh, trust has been a problem. But to say we are not going to trust, um, I think I'm an optimist. We may not trust fully. Maybe we'll say benefit of doubt. That this time, now, INEC will do what they are expected to do. The one single assignment they had to do to deliver on the promises they have made. They need to do that. IREV, the, the polling unit results, must move to IREV from the polling units and not afterwards. And, of course, the observers will be there just to do their business. They are not to interfere with the process. We are only there to observe the elections and to gather the piece of information we have to, to aggregate them, analyze them, and, of course, uh, submit a report of, of also to INEC so that they can improve on their, on their, their processes going forward. So we are, we are quite ready for tomorrow. We are quite ready. Okay. Well, Father, they know the fear face. <laughs> you had to take over. It made me laugh. Sorry. Yes. Uh, well, um, but this beautiful bride, that was the bride that was supposed to be beautiful, turned out not so beautiful. And she's coming back to ask for a second chance, like Father has said. What conditions are you giving this bride, which is INEC at this moment, uh, for this second chance that you're giving? What are the conditions that you would like to see tomorrow? Um, just an improvement in the process. Um, first of all, the logistics. So as at yesterday, INEC had assured that um, non-sensitive materials had been moved, had been deployed as at Wednesday. Um, and then the sensitive materials started getting deployed as at yesterday in some places and then, you know, continues into today. Um, so we expect, for example, that officials should arrive at the polling unit on time. It's a very critical part of the process because there are polling units that have more than a thousand um, registered voters. There are polling units that have reportedly 5,000 you know, registered voters. How do you uh, process 5,000 people in one polling unit when the process will take maybe two to three minutes for each person to finish? You know, so they need to start on time. Um, of course, I think, you know, Reverend and uh, my brother on, on, on Zoom has also said this, the use of technology has to be in place. We cannot have stories and excuses about the failure of beavers to upload, you know. Um, uh, you know, these things are far-fetched. Uh, the beavers, I think like Oa said, look, this, this technology is basic. There is nothing spectacular about this machine. It's, an, it's a pad. It's just a tablet. Um, you know, saying that you can't upload on it is smacks of um, some sort of mischief, uh, if I may say. You know, so would like to see the technology used. Would like to see INEC respect their processes. Very crucially, something happened um, pervasively. Um, on, on the 25th of uh, February, a lot of people were disenfranchised. A lot. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, you know it, it appears as though it was a significant number of people who were on the queue as at 2.30 in line with the provisions of INEC of the guidelines and who never got to vote because uh, of the affliction of time. You know, at mm -hmm. 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. in some places, the INEC officials simply packed up and left with a huge number of people having failed to have voted yet. In some places, the, uh, you know, the registered voters uh, took 
uh, things into their own hands and refused to allow the, allow the INEC officials to leave. And they voted till 4 a.m., till 5 a.m., you know, in some instances. We have to ensure, I think we need to call on INEC that they respect their own guidelines. What the guidelines say is if somebody is on the queue, as at the closing time of the polls, that person must vote. You know, so this is very crucial. I saw that and it was very painful. Um, so you see, for example, that in the results, if we were to take those results for what they are on the face value, um, turnout has been the lowest, I think possibly in our history, you know, 20, 20, 20, 29 percent or something like that. It's, it's, it's terrible, you know, and it appears as though turnout was far more than that. There was some measure of suppression, either deliberate or, or perhaps just as a result of processing efficiencies or what have you. Uh, we have to ensure that those things don't happen again. We'd like to see a greater turnout tomorrow. We'd like to see that turnout result in votes that are counted and like OO said, that are collated. You know, so, so there's so much expectation for tomorrow. We would appeal to INEC to just allow this process be. Let the outcome of this election tomorrow be a reflection of what the people of Nigeria all over the country want to see. Let me just digress a little bit, <clears throat> but still remain with you. Um, the presidential election, we've not heard the last of it. We, at least we know political parties that are contesting this in court. Is the civil society organizations or are the civil society organizations in uh, Nigeria also having a say and following that case? Oh, yes. I mean, look, the, the election, um, electioneering process um, starts long before election day and ends long after election day. And um, as a civil society organization, whatever your role might be in, in the value chain of the election process, you do have to stay in touch with all of that till the end. Um, so the, the ongoing legal challenge and, you know, what's happening in, in the courts in various places, let's not forget that it's not only the presidential elections that have gone to court. Uh, a lot of candidates for, you know, senatorial um, districts and constituencies in the House of Reps have also gone to court to try and uh, reclaim mandates that they believe have been stolen, you know. So that process is being followed and uh, we hope and expect to see the judiciary play the role that um, the Constitution provides for them, being uh, the last hope of, in this case, they're not so common, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but being, being the last, being the, 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 the temple of justice, where if people that are feeling aggrieved can get a redress. Now, this is crucial because where that fails, you leave room for people to take the law into their own hands, and you leave a risk, you run the risk of allowing anarchy to rail. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard some of the things that are circulating now about protests and all of that. Yeah. It's simply because people don't trust the judiciary. So that process of uh, redress seeking and all of that needs to go through to the end. Um, we hope that the judiciary will not disappoint and we hope that justice will be done. Okay, uh, let me come to you, OO, for a word of advice to INEC and the people. You've already told the people that if you want justice, if you want things to be transparent, be sure you take photographs of the process and the end results and all that. But what does INEC have to look out for? Last time we remember that uh, they claimed that in some places there was no network. Even when we were promised that they were not even going to use the network providers around Nigeria, they were going to use network, a network that will never fail which we didn't see on that day. Well, some of, some of the pointers to INEC, if they have to look out for things that might hinder the process, what are they, uh, if they're listening now, to know? Um, usually, there's a saying again that goes that you should not attribute to malice what can be explained by ignorance. Um, I can confirm that INEC is not ignorant on what should be done. I think... Um, um, Father um, Anolefo is, is quite, uh, but I say he's, he's quite generous with his expectations. Um, I, I don't think the, we should ever be comparing our elections with bad, with worse. Uh, 2019, terrible. We should have a standard of elections. Someone scores 20, another person scores 27 over 100. We should not be celebrating or even looking in any, in any case favorably at the person that scored 27. Both are bad. We should have a standard 70% is the past mark. And for quite a long time, we have had slight progress, but it's no longer enough. There has to be leapfrogging. 
Now, the thing is, there's really no consequence for bad behavior. So I, I, I don't want to seem antagonistic towards INEC. I keep on saying that. But enough. Like, we're Nigerians. We can do much better than this. Why, why are we giving these excuses? It makes no sense to transmit a count. You count 10 for someone and just transmit that information. It can be transmitted with an SMS. There are too many technologies that could fix it. So I wouldn't be, I keep on saying I wouldn't be trusting. It doesn't mean that we, could, we would not respect or accept grudgingly. I don't need to even accept it, but we would not, we would not be bound by the outcome. But we have to take a stronger position on saying that, no, it's enough. This, this is soiling our name. We saw the, um, the, the, the outgoing um, UK ambassador, uh, Katrina Liang, saying, oh, we have come a long way in infantilizing Nigeria. In Brazil, the, elections result, the election, election results are concluded that very night in hours. Two, three hours after closing, 90-something percent of the results are in. So that's the that's where we should be we should be operating. I have no advice. If I were to advise in, in technology, we normally do something called postmortem. If something goes wrong and you want to end back trust, you'll be public about what happened. This is what happened. This is what we did wrong, and this is what we are doing to ensure it doesn't happen again. Now we're talking of the IRF. No one knows what happened. So who says it's not going to happen again? How can you go? and just hope INEC would not do it again. We should go and warn them, no consequence, nothing, go, nothing happens. Okay, oh, so oh, oh, I, let, me, yeah. let me cut you there, so that you, you have time to tell us a little bit about this uh, uh, Collate.Africa that you said. Is, does it yes. have the capacity to make INEC sit up, for instance? Just tell us briefly well, about it. First of all, so Collate.Africa is basically everyone having IREF. So anyone can put in this course and upload the uh, form E68A uh, sheet. Simple. Now it is now it has been democratized. So what we are saying is that at any point you could you just go go online, collate C O L A T E, collate dot Africa. You register your point unit on the day of the election. You take a picture of the results sheets. President, um, gubernatorial, whatever state you upload it and put in this course. How can now, you? How can you make and, sure and that? Many how can you make sure that this course that are uploaded are authentic? So, because we're not, we don't have the, um, we don't have the rights, or we don't, we're not backed by law. What we're optimizing for is transparency. So, at a polling unit, five different people can upload their results. So, if five of them decide to lie. But what I have seen from experience is that Nigerians are not bad actors at scale, right? So what would happen is 10 people upload the result, one person might be a bad actor, nine of them will be correct. Um, Father Anulefo said when he went online, he saw that it was actu actually the result that was um, uploaded. Mine, in my case in Aba, in Anambra State, it was the accurate result uploaded, but two weeks after. Um, so what we're doing now we have already built something in a week, right? Using our own personal funds. INEC was given a budget of almost a billion dollars, 300 and a many hundred billion dollars to build this, and they had years. So INEC should be, I, I don't know how they should feel now that individuals could come together and build what they were given and mandated to do. Are you all so Nigerians? What we are doing. Oh, oh, are you all Nigerians of course, that all, built this? Definitely all Nigerians. Because it gives me joy to find Nigerians. out that our Nigerians can do what uh, we go at. We're looking for something in Sokoto. When is this in Ashokoto? Is that not what this is? Uh, Ashokoto, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so okay. we're, we're, we're built it. It's uh, agnostic. Um, teams can use it. So JDPC um, uh, can use it for their teams. All right. And, uh, okay, uh, um, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. Um, because we are out of time right now. Father, let me come to you. Talk to the people because tomorrow a lot of people will be dragging their feet. Uh, but from what you have seen, from what you're hoping for, talk to Lagosians and everybody, every Nigerian who is watching this right now, how you, you would like for tomorrow to be like. Neutrality does not favor the oppressor. It doesn't favor the oppressed, sorry. Rather, it favors the oppressor. 
um, to lie down, resign to fate is madness, says Olaro Timi in his book, The Gods Are Not to Blame. Uh, so I would say we all have to come out. We all have to come out. Uh, people are disappointed. A lot of persons have said they may not be turning up for the elections. And with the, with the seeming threats and um, suppressions and, and statements out there, Yachukudi uh, and all of that that we've heard in the last 24 to 48 hours it has also heightened the, the whole thing. I would still urge people to come out, but I would want to appeal. If you remember very well the, the, the last time we had an engagement, I said there are two institutions that need to deliver, INEC and the security agencies. The security agencies are supposed to go after all those who have made, overheated the polity in the last one or two weeks leading up to this, so that people can actually come out. A lot of persons don't want to come out because they are afraid, because they think that they may be hot and the security agencies will not be there to protect them. But I'm, I, I want to appeal. We all come out en masse. We stay there from the beginning till the end. There is a lot of security in number. So, but if you just allow few persons to be scattered across the polling units, it probably becomes very difficult to um, ward away any form of um, aggressor that comes. But Nigerians should please come out and vote and guard their votes jealously. And then INEC, fulfill your responsibility, your task. You have only one duty, deliver on it. Okay, I share with you. Well, I mean, look, um, I think it's important that Nigerians understand um, very clearly that this election, in so many regards, is far more important than the 25th of February election mm -hmm. because you are electing governors and um, state house of assembly um, uh, representatives who will be making laws that impact you directly in your locality. Um, the local government elections, for example, is probably even more important than this. But guess what? This governor that you're electing and the House of Assembly guys that you're electing are the ones that determine whether you get actual local government executives or not. You know, so we can't joke with how important this election is. And I think that the only thing we can say is that people should go out, go vote, and protect your vote. Go with your phones. Um, you are protected by the law to use them. Go with your phones and, you know, um, exercise your franchise and protect your vote. And then let's hope that INEC will do their own part. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whoever is watching us right now, we're hoping that tomorrow you will go out if you are of voting age. We've been, we've been talking on the ballot. The studio is just open today. And tomorrow morning we'll be here to monitor what is happening. Our reporters will be on the field also giving us information what is happening, step-by-step -step information. We've had uh, uh, Father Raymond Anolier for Director of Justice Development and Peace Center here. Uh, with us. We've also had Shegun Shokwiton, who is a public affairs analyst. He's also the chairman of Accountability Canada and Transparency Network, and he's calling for transparency in tomorrow's election. We've ha had also uh, Nwoye Oo, who is a technology executive, and I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program today. Thank you very much. It's been much a pleasure. Us. Thank you. I wish you all safety tomorrow as you monitor the elections, and I wish Nigerians safety as well. And may the will of God be done. Amen. Until we meet tomorrow morning on the ballot again, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a blessed night.